Um, so I wanted to actually start with something that I found um, on Instagram uh, recently. Hopefully it will still fit. It doesn't fit, of course. I'm gonna try to zoom out a little bit. Um, this was some good news. I don't know if you guys found this like on um, during the, the pandemic, but there was a show called Some Good News. I think John Krasinski did it. But this is the Instagram um, feed for that. And it was a, a railing in Naples that has been brailed with a description of the view and different like poems and things like that. Um, and I just saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, I hadn't, hadn't thought about that. Um, so I feel like if, if I, I don't, I wanna say if nothing else, but that's not quite the right phrasing. I feel like this program has just opened me up to being aware of so many ways in which we can um, enhance experiences, whether it's books, whether it's games, whether it's posters, whether it's railings. Um, and so I just thought it was great. Um, it's not always things like that that connect, but it just happened to connect um, for this conference. So that was kind of fun. And I shared that with a colleague who had gone to the training as well. So. I'm here today to talk a little bit about the virtual and hybrid programming. Um, and I, again, I feel like I just am learning so much. So sometimes I feel like I don't know if I have as much to share, but I can just share what we've done. Um, and so my name is Amanda Corn. I'm the STEM education program facilitator at the Makerspace or the Center for Excellence in STEM Education um, at Central Michigan University. So I'm not sure if I'm mirrored or not, but like right here. <laughs> So if I'm mirrored, then it's backwards, um, but we're right in the middle of Michigan, and I think that uh, Andrea Graham from the Chippewa River District Library is also in attendance today. Um, she and Christy also attended. We all went together last January, and we were so excited to come back and really kick this program off, and as Stacy mentioned, I think our biggest hurdle was that we lost access to our audience. Um, in the maker space, we would typically have classrooms come in. Um, I know the library would have student programming, family programming. So that caused us to pivot pretty quickly. Um, and what that led to is trying to find ways to do virtual programs. And we tried to attach it to other things. So the first one that we did together was connected to World Sight Day, which is the second Thursday in October. We kind of, through social media, we would share just different, different um, bits of information just to again raise awareness and then what we would do is we put together at the makerspace kits that patrons at the library could pick up and that model had been working well for the library to have like these sort of take and make sort of things and then what we tried to do in addition to that was to follow it up with a synchronous um, zoom meeting and so i think we had roughly maybe four families. I think we had a lot of the kits picked up, but what we were finding is that not everyone who picked up was able to log on, um, but included in their kit was a, a link QR code to um, a video that would give them instructions if they were unable to attend us uh, our meeting synchronously. Um, and so here is just a couple screenshots. We've been really good at learning how to do screenshots and blacking out names and, and having fun over Zoom and building community. Um, and so, we walked through playing tactile Pictionary with the families who attended. Um, and in fact, actually what I started realizing was I have to explain Pictionary to some of the kids, the little kids first, and then I can explain the tactile Pictionary. So it's always a learning process. Um, and then I actually did share that video too that you we saw yesterday about this program. And so letting them know the things that you might not, not realize like we have a middle school there middle schooler there who you know as they're learning the parts of a cell they might just take for granted the fact that they're looking at this beautiful diagram in their textbook when how would that be represented for someone who can't see that image and so that was really a great conversation um and that was kind of just our first little taste right so we had this 3d uh world sight day tactile pictionary um pick up, make things, engage, and that was kind of the first little interaction. The next one that we were able to participate with was 3D Giving Day. And this one we actually, um, for our part as a center, we did this with both the Chippewa River District Library and the Bay City Library System. And it was kind of great. I used to teach middle school, so I always 
apologize to first hour that I learned things that I needed to do for second hour and then in second hour learn things to do for third hour. So having two events for 3D Giving Day that were kind of um, really close together, we were able to like make some some changes between to I think enhance the experience. And for those of you um, who are not familiar, uh, hopefully many of you are with 3D Giving Day, but it was kind of this combination of 3D Printing Day, which is December 3rd, so 3D, and then Giving Day, which is sort of this like, I think it was Giving Tuesday, typically like right after um, the Black Friday and all that stuff. And so it was just this kind of combination holiday where we were trying to create different tactile graphics using 3D printers or 3D pens. Um, and so this was again, another way that we were able to provide some information to the patrons. Um, and we actually ran both the libraries ran their own registrations and then we ran our own registration. And then what patrons would get, what registrants would get was a kit with a board book. And of course I am working from home today and didn't bring my physical board book, um, but they would get a board book, uh, some wiki sticks, a blindfold. Um, they would get uh, a 3D pen to, to borrow. And then the idea is that we would once again join together because this is a different group. We got connected about like what makes a good tactile graphic. So we did a little bit of the tech for Pictionary again. And then we talked about how to use the 3D pen to actually enhance right on the board book. Um, and then once patrons were comfortable with that, uh, we were able to go ahead and let them continue to enhance their book. And then they had a deadline at which they needed to bring that back. So these are some of the pictures um, from both the library systems. Um, and it was kind of great. We were able to like, you know, acknowledge that the gift or the book was enhanced by a family or a patron. So you're giving them some, some credit there as well. Um, and then actually the third thing, I, I hear I'm, I'm saying this, we actually did this with a school as well. Um, and this was interesting because, um, so my daughter was in one of the, uh, she was my helper here. And so she was virtual, but her students, her classmates had a STEM class that was added to their schedule. And the teacher had partnered with us often in the past. And so I asked, could I present to your whole class and then ask for interested students to do a, to a tactically enhance a, a book as well. And we had a group of about eight students. What's different with this is that we had about three touch points with this class. The first was the whole group. And then I zoomed in probably two or three additional times. You can kind of see they had their computers out and they're working. Um, and that was just a small group of her STEM class doing this while the other group was doing something else. And that took place over the course of a few weeks. I think that all of the experiences were really helpful. Um, but I think that, as I think we all know, that the more touch points and the closer you can get to the community, you can see like the, the level of investment. So they use not just 3D printing, um, but they use a whole combination. We've got craft sticks and uh, we talked about representing characters. So this is like just the trunk representing the elephant. You don't have to depict the entire elephant necessarily or the mane of the lion. And so we were able to actually, I think get more um, complete books when they have longer to practice and to, to work on that. Um, and so this kind of encapsulates sort of some of the things that we learned as we went through these processes. Um, it does help to have the advanced registration and having the kit that also then eliminates like uh, if we were to able to have in-person programming at the library, someone who happens to be there, we've had that happen bef before in the past where they didn't know that this was happening and then they would just join in. So for online and virtual, we couldn't have necessarily that drop in. Um, so we had to rely on registrations and reminders and social media and things like that. So having multiple partners was really helpful. Um, I think sometimes too, we learned, at least I did, that clarifying the program and providing context is key. I think that when we're in it, we, we know what we mean. And for people who have never heard of this before, they're not, they might need more than we think. Um, and so it's finding that sweet spot of, of not giving too much that they're overwhelmed, but giving enough so that they understand what they're engaged um, to do. 
um, the importance of a shared experience. I know that virtually we were kind of all over Zoom by the end of the whole virtual year and we're still doing things, but I also think that it just reminded me that coming together can look a lot of different ways and it's okay to, to still build that community and have there's power in that shared experience online. Um, I think that what I gained out of the classroom experience was that uh, fourth bullet point, having a chance to really um, have the participants reflect on their process was helpful. So not only participate, but also reflect. Um, having more opportunities to explore materials and a range of materials was helpful. Um, and I think also making sure that the participants have a chance to ask the questions, which they might need time to form, and then to sort of like gauge the expectation. Um, I keep thinking about what Reese said. I wrote it down about the um, simple design, exquisite production or whatever. And I think that that's huge, right? Like um, really making it, it doesn't have to be like this complex thing. It can just be done simply and well. Um, in terms of some future projects that we're hoping to do, um, I don't know if that STEM class is actually still happening, if it was just a, a thing that they needed to do in uh, the last year being virtual and in person. So I'll be looking at that. But um, I have actually connected more to the, um, the DeafBlind Central community on campus. So we were able to try to connect and hopefully use them as a resource for getting our materials to an, an audience, an authentic audience. Um, I've just continued to learn and raise awareness and increase my own understanding through the Michigan Department of Education, low incidence outreach events. Um, and then one of the ideas that we had was to make, um, do like a high contrast and tactile card campaign to send to one of the local nursing homes. Um, and so that's the laurels. And then you see underneath there are like all of the different schools and partnerships. Um, and John, I feel like I work with a bunch of undergraduate students at the university as well. And so seeing what you've done with your students, um, I, my wheels are spinning about even more ways in which we can connect with classrooms and get our pre-service teachers even doing these things as well. And we wouldn't be able to do any of this without the support of Build a Better Book. So yes, thank you very much.